Hey everyone, I wanted to make an NES, so I did. When creating a 3D model, there are a lot of things to consider. Is it going to be low poly, photorealistic, maybe a mix? Is it going to only ever be seen from certain angles? The answers to these questions will change your workflow a bit, so it's important to have an idea of what you want before you start. My personal goal was to create an NES model using a workflow that could be fairly easily adapted into a low, medium, or high poly model. I'm going to talk you through my process of creating it while attempting to give suggestions on how the workflow could be adjusted depending on your goals. And hopefully you find it helpful or useful or learn a few things along the way. Here's the default scene. Before I start adding any objects, I want to set up my outliner so that I can keep my scene organized. Right clicking in the outliner gives us some options. Choosing new will add a new collection to our scene. You can click and drag these collections and objects around in the outliner as you see fit. I'm going to add a few collections to my scene a collection for the Nintendo objects, one for any objects I want to archive whenever I want to create a backup object. A lot of times while modeling, you use modifiers, which non-destructively change your mesh's geometry. But situations come up where you need to alter your geometry in ways that aren't easily undone, so it's nice to archive your objects beforehand in case you want to quickly go back to a previous version. And then finally a collection for the reference, which are just going to be images we place in our scene to help us size our model. With the cursor over the 3D viewport, hit numpad 5 to enter orthographic view and numpad 1 for front view. If you're new to Blender, you can see your current view in this upper left hand corner. Now let's add our reference. Hit shift A, scroll down to image, and choose reference. Navigate to your reference image. I'm going to use an image I found by searching for the NES's dimensions, which was very helpful for the overall shape, but by looking at other images, some of the details didn't quite seem the correct size or location. So I'm not sure if this is a different version of the NES that I'm going for, but I'm just going to eyeball in a lot of the detail. I'll make some renders of my final model and put them up on our Patreon in case you'd rather use those. Now in the upper right hand corner, switch to wireframe view, so we can see the reference through our cube. Select the reference image and grab it by hitting G. I've also hit X to constrain its movement to the X axis. Now slide it over to line up the front image with the cube as best you can. If you aren't familiar with the basic navigation within Blender, check out this video. I'm going to move this reference image back on the Y axis so it's not inside my object. Make sure to name your objects in the outliner so that you don't lose track of what everything is. With the cube selected, hit tab to enter edit mode, and A to select all. Switch over to vertex select, and hit S to scale down the cube to match the front reference. I'm going to try to center my reference a little better. Select and tab back into the cube and continue adjusting everything. Scale down on the Z axis by hitting S and then Z until the top of the cube lines up with the top of the NES. Double tap A to deselect everything, then hit C to use circle select, select all the bottom vertices. Hit escape to cancel circle select and hit GZ to move the bottom vertices up. So we've got our cube about the right size, let's start adding these angles. Hit Ctrl R and left or right click on the model, depending on what your primary click is, to add an edge loop. Now dragging the mouse will adjust the edge loop's location. I added an edge loop on this line and then another down here where the mesh will bend. Double tap A to deselect and using circle select, grab all the top vertices. Scale down on the X axis with S and X. Do the same on the bottom, select and scale. If we switch over to material view, it's somewhat resembling an NES already. So now we've got the basic shape correct from the front, we need to get the top and side lined up. I want to be able to refer back to this reference image as it is now, so I'm going to duplicate it by selecting it and hitting Shift D. Hit R and Z to rotate it on the Z axis and type 90. This will rotate it by 90 degrees on the Z axis. Hit numpad 3 to enter right view, grab and move this reference to line up the side image with the NES object as best as you can. Make sure it's out of the way on the X axis. Select and tab into the NES. Select the front vertices and hit GY to move them back on the Y axis. And I want one more reference image, so select and duplicate this reference with Shift D. Move it above the object and rotate it 90 degrees. Hit numpad 1 to enter front view and move this reference below the object. Hit numpad 7 to enter top view and line this reference up with our object. So funnily enough, if you want an extremely low poly NES model, this is pretty much done. You just texture at this point. Feel free to duplicate and archive this shape in case you want to bake a high poly model's normals and textures onto it later. 
If you're curious on that process, we cover how to do it in this series. Now that's our main shape finished, let's start adding details. Hit Ctrl R to add an edge loop down the middle. This will give us a flat edge loop to reference for other edge loops. Hit Ctrl R again and click here. By default, the edge loops are a midway point between the bordering edge loops. Hit E to turn this off. Hitting F will change which bordering edge loop the shape is taken from. So hit F until the red dot is here and slide this edge loop to line up with this edge. Add another edge loop in the same way here. Just keep adding edge loops to get the basic details outlined. Head into top view with numpad 7 and add this edge loop in. And this one as well. We can disable the visibility of the reference and head into material view and here's how our NES looks so far. Now we're going to set up our object with some modifiers to non-destructively change its geometry and make the details significantly easier to create. There are a lot of different modifiers and a bunch of different ways to set them up, so you have a lot of options when modeling. In the Modifiers tab, click Add Modifier, and I'm going to add a Solidify, which will give all of our faces some thickness. Enabling Even Thickness will attempt to maintain thickness around sharp corners, which we have a lot of. Then add a Bevel Modifier, which as the name implies, bevels things that fall within its parameters. Reduce the amount, I went with .01, and I changed the segment amount to 3. This will ultimately add a lot of geometry to our object, so if you prefer, you can use less segments or skip the bevel altogether. These modifiers have a lot of options, so if you're ever confused on what anything does, look it up on Blender Docs. Link in the description. Let's switch over to Material View to preview the object shading. Looks okay! Now back to solid shading. Right now our edges are very clearly defined without any shading blending. Tab into Edit Mode, select All with A, and in the Face menu, choose Shade Smooth. I like using smooth shading, but in combination with the bevel modifier, you end up with some strange normals sometimes. It's fairly subtle, but see how along the edges something doesn't look quite right? This shading issue will get significantly more noticeable as we add details, so let's fix it now, which it's actually pretty simple to do. Go into the Object Data Properties tab, under the Normals menu, enable Auto Smooth. Go back into the Modifiers tab, expand the Shading drop-down menu, and enable Hardened Normals. This is more what it should look like. See the difference? Much better with Hardened Normals enabled. Alright, so we're ready to start adding details. Re-enable the visibility of the reference so we can identify which faces are connected details. And because of how we have our modifiers set up, we can just separate our mesh into parts to start adding details. Let's start with this piece. Actually need to add an edge loop here and here. Switch to Face Select, and select all of these faces while holding Shift. Ending with this face. When everything is selected, hit P and choose Selection. This will turn the faces into a new object. And also because of our modifiers, it'll have some shape to it. Select this new object and tab into it. Select this large face and hit P, choose selection. Select the original shape and tab into it. Select all of the faces that make up the lid, hit P and choose selection. Once again, select the original object, switch into wireframe view and select all of these lower faces however you want. I've accidentally selected this face on top, don't do that. Hit P and choose selection. And since I had that top face selected, it's now a part of the wrong object. If this happens, find the faces that accidentally got separated, turn them into their own object with P. Now shift select the new object in the object they should be a part of, and hit Ctrl J to join them together. Tab into the object and select all with A. Then hit M and choose Merge by Distance. Now it's all one object again. We've more or less got our object divided up into smaller objects that make sense now, so let's name them. I don't have any official parts names, so I'm just going to name them whatever makes sense to me. Select this object and duplicate it with Shift-D. Temporarily disable the visibility of the new object, and let's make it look like this thing. Tab into the first vent thing object, and let's add some edge loops. Hit Ctrl R and scroll the mouse wheel until the cut amount reads 40 down here. Now click to confirm, and click again to place without moving. Switch to Face Select and select all with A. Under the Select menu, choose Checker Deselect. 
Now hit X to delete and choose faces. Expand the bevel menu and change the bevel amount to something very low. I went with 0.001. Select this object again and tab into edit mode. Scale it up slightly on the X axis and lower it down on the Z axis. That looks pretty good, so re-enable the second vent object and let's turn it into a shape below the vent that blocks our line of sight into the NES. Select and tab into this object. Remove the solidify modifier. With this face selected, hit E to extrude and lower it a bit on the Z axis. Now select the top face again and delete it with X. I don't want to see the edges of this new object, so lower it on the Z axis a little more. And then in edit mode with it all selected, scale up on the X axis just a tiny bit, and then the same on the Y axis. This will tuck the edges into the surrounding objects. Thanks for watching! I hope you enjoyed! Join us again next time where we continue making the NES model. Please remember to leave us a like, subscribe if you're not, maybe drop a comment, tell me how cool I am, or not. Stay safe, I love you all, goodbye!